first thing I want to show you is really new for us, and we were we are still kind of excited about it, and that's the text navigation feature. Not music related, but totally podcast creator related. And we just looked at the numbers. Um, there's a research, um, and the company is called Signal Fire. They found out that there is about 50 million, 50 million people out there who consider themselves creators. Uh, and that's especially when you look at YouTube, Twitch, um, and TikTok, and so on. So text navigation talks to these people, but also to post-production engineers who work on long dialogue of voiceover files. So what does it do? I have a dialogue file with, uh, here. I can play that back. I, I have a friend who bought a house, and he painted the inside a dark charcoal color. So we've got this dialogue file. It could be 20 minutes long, but it could easily be two hours long. And if you want to navigate, and if you look back at what I showed you in the beginning, if you want to navigate such a long file and you only see the waveform, it's going to be really difficult. Having the spectrogram don't, doesn't really make it much easier uh, because you can't see words. So what we did was we put in a text detection function and you can get to that if you uh, look to the lower left, there's this little text bubble. If I click that, um, Rx will re-analyze um, the audio and put a word lane on top of the spectrogram. Now, if I, if I zoom in, I can go down to the, because it's lots of gibberish here, I can go down to the word level. And if I play back the audio... You know, tons and tons of plants, so we're going to need a bright space. You know that I love a plant, Mom. You can see that, uh, you can see two things. You can see words and you can see two colors. So Rx did not only um, recognize or detect speech and converted this to like written text and made a transcription. It also detected two different speakers. Um, now, if I go down here next to the little text bubble and click on this little um, script here, I can see that um, Rx detected two different speakers, which is right, I know this file. And the cool thing is now, if you have a really, really long audio file and you, you've got different speakers, uh, you might want to edit them separately. So what you can do now is you can click on, on those speakers and um, Rx will put a selection automatically uh, on your um, spectrogram. And if I select the other speaker, it's doing this. So this is very, very handy. Um, apart from that, you can just rename the speakers and call the first one Terry or whatever. And you can also go into the word lane and rename words. Now, one of the biggest criticisms we got, and it's totally fair criticism, is that the word lane doesn't show the right words all the time. To understand this, um, there's a couple of things, um, and I hope I don't sound too apologetic, but um, the algorithm is trained towards American English um, language. So if you have, even if you have a, a different accent like me, like an annoying German accent, or um, if you have a British, even a British accent, sometimes um, the results might not be very accurate. The second thing is the audio you use needs to be relatively low noise. So what you want to do if you detect text in a file is clean it up a bit before you do that and the results might even be better. Um, one reason for this is also that this is a complete offline solution. So we we decided to do that as an offline solution and build it in to Rx because of different reasons. Um, lots of post-production people are still not blessed with the best internet. Some don't even use internet on their working machines in their post-production studios. And um, others, like me, sit on a German train and don't have any internet. So there's different reasons why we decided to go for an offline um, version, but we promise that this is version one and we will improve. And that's with lots of the things we've done in the past. Um, it will gradually improve over time. That, uh, Chris, if I could just jump in, that yes. was uh, that was a question that has already come up in the chat. And am I correct in assuming in, in, on the different languages front and obviously the accent front, 
that that's in the roadmap already to improve and expand and by by the end of it all have as many languages as possible that is the ultimate goal and i don't know maybe we will even be able to connect to a cloud service at some point and try that version uh, at least that you can better get get better results when you're online but that's um stuff we're discussing right now as you mentioned in the beginning we just jumped out of the release um, and need to lick our wounds and then uh, try to figure out what's next but yes so as you might imagine and we got asked why did you release that now why didn't you wait there is no there's no correct moment in time because if you want to you know you start with a different accent and you start with a different language then you want to cover not only Mandarin Chinese, but also, you know, we've got lots of languages on the planet. So it will take some time until we have a, a completely perfect feature. And it might still be, you know, um, not perfect because we are all humans. But um, the cool thing is it's already, we think it's already usable. Uh, and that's for different reasons. Like for instance, if you're working on a long audio file and um, you're looking for a word, let's say, I look for the word dark. I can go to the search pane on the left side up here and type in a word. And then I click on uh, can click on that word and play it back. Dark, dark, dark. Or try the other dark. Dark, dark, dark. And if you know Jeff, uh, my colleague Jeff Manchester, who's doing uh, amazing product videos for us, he shows in one of his videos how you actually um, use a word in a, in a long audio file, cut it, and copy it or copy it and copy it over to um, another word that was not pronounced properly. And this is the cool thing about the search function is it's a, we call it fuzzy search. So it will not only come up with the actual word you looked for, but also with similar words in terms of uh, characters. So if there's something that was not pronounced right, you might still be able to find it uh, in your audio file. Can and you, believe me, can, yeah. Can you show us how to copy and, and uh, replace? Yeah, for instance, I mean, if you go, it's actually pretty straightforward. So you can uh, actually just copy stuff like uh -huh. here. And then you could go to the other dock. And then you could come up here and um, either paste as an insert <clears throat> or replace or even mix. So I could just do this. And now I've got two words there, but actually I, would, I should have replaced it. But um, yeah, so this would be the... Um, the way to to copy something from one end to the other. And in long files, it can be very helpful. Um, again, speech to text, we are pretty excited about it and I hope that we are already helping a lot of people out there um, and we will improve this. I have a, a question. Yes. So when I was doing my video for the new release, I actually, the algorithm picked up some like mouth noise or something as a third mm -hmm. speaker. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for me to tell it, no, this is actually speaker, this is actually Joshua making this strange noise and not a third person? <laughs> is there a way to manually do that? Not yet. Okay. Um, so what we are working on right now, and this is already, I can't promise the date, but we're working on a patch that is relatively close. Um, to, to us now. I mean, it's not going to happen tomorrow, but uh, it's go going to happen later this year. Uh, we are working on a patch that tackles exactly that problem. So what happens right now is that the, the text um, detection algorithm, yeah, it thinks you are saying something when you're not sometimes. And um, this has already been worked on. So at this minute, we've got developers sitting in Boston. Hi, guys, if you're watching, <laughs> uh, working on this. So yeah. Um Another question. So you had just, can we maybe undo the the paste you did and then copy and paste? And I, I there's actually uh, myself and someone in the chat want to actually hear what that sounds like and how much further manipulation we might need to do to make it's it too dark. It will. Smoother. Well, the problem, <laughs> the problem is the one dark um, happens dark, here, dark and the, the other dark chart here. So oh, that yeah, would be quite some work because we'd need to turn somebody into uh, into a woman, which is technically possible with dialog contour, maybe and shifting formants. You could do something crazy like that, but uh, let me let me just try to find 
something that was probably coming up more often. Um, so we've got this. And, 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 oh, that's a short. No, 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 no. That's, that, 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 that. Okay, try to find out yourself. <laughs> we've got a trial um, on our website. So, um, or watch Jeff's video. I think it's, it is online on our YouTube channel and it should be the speech to text uh, video. And okay. he has got...